Some of us know that health and nutrition can be a little more complex than what we're led to believe by the mainstream. We hear the same old lines, take this and that will happen. This can fix that. You know the story. And we realize that it's just marketing and we have to come to expect that. But there are some areas in health, like iron deficiency, that we better fully understand before we try to supplement, as major consequences can result from misuse. I want to get one thing straight right off the bat in regards to anemia and iron. Usually, if you hear one of them mentioned, you almost always hear the other one in the very same sentence. They seem to be connected at the hip, but anemia can be caused by factors other than iron deficiency. B12 deficiencies or dysfunctional thyroid can cause anemia as well. So using red blood cell or hemoglobin tests to determine iron deficiency is idiotic and potentially dangerous. Don't supplement iron unless actual iron levels have been tested and a deficiency is apparent. High iron levels are linked to heart attack, liver damage, increases in harmful gut bacteria, and more production of free radicals leading to accelerated aging and higher potential for disease. So with all that out of the way, let's dive into the foods. Diet is a very important factor in iron bioavailability, not only because dietary iron is a much safer way to boost iron, but because there are a lot of things that help or hurt absorption and uptake. It's not as simple as just finding the foods with the highest iron content. Maybe you've heard of heme and non-heme iron. Heme iron is formed when iron combines with protoporphyrin 9. Basically, heme iron is what you get from many animal products and has great bioavailability. Plants and eggs offer the non-heme iron, and while plants usually contain more iron than meat, it is far less bioavailable. So foods to be aware of are things like eggs. Just one boiled egg can impair iron absorption by 28%. Trying to get iron from eggs is like trying to get hydrated from drinking ocean water. Oxalates also make any mineral tough to absorb. Foods like kale, spinach, wheat bran, chocolate, nuts, tea, and spices like oregano, basil, and parsley all contain high amounts of oxalates. Polyphenols that you get from coffee, apples, many berries, and peppermint are also a problem. And some of those oxalate foods I already listed also have polyphenols. Then there are the phytates, which are compounds found in soy protein and fiber. So be careful about things that you're consuming when taking iron. I'm not saying to cut out all of these foods from your diet. Some are actually pretty healthy food. But it's just the timing that's important here. I wouldn't eat any of this stuff within two hours of your iron consumption. So what can you eat with your iron supplement? Well, meats are going to be your best friend. Beef, poultry, salmon, and pork are all great options. Consuming just 50 grams of meat can lead to a two to four times more iron absorption. And beef may actually be the best of them all. Citrus fruits are also great. Or maybe you're a big fan of orange juice like me. So on to the more supplement based section. The best supplement to aid in iron absorption is vitamin C. Studies show that 100 milligrams of ascorbic acid can increase iron absorption from a specific meal by over four times. Our body wants to immediately oxidize iron supplements and produce toxic byproduct waste. The antioxidant protective vitamin C prevents this from happening, leading to better uptake. I don't think you should ever supplement iron without a vitamin C. Not only because of its help in the bioavailability aspect, it's also saving your butt from iron-induced heart problems. Vitamin A has also been shown to benefit iron absorption, but only beta-carotene, not the retinol form. And betaine HCL can also be of help to the breakdown of food in digestion. Most people with iron deficiencies have low levels of stomach acid, further compounding the iron problem. A little boost in hydrochloric acid can really help to get you back on track again. Calcium, magnesium, zinc, and copper supplements should not be taken within two hours of your iron supplement. These minerals share the same receptors in the body, and only about 800 milligrams in total can be handled. Even just one calcium supplement at 300 milligrams has been shown to drastically impair iron uptake, and that not only applies to supplements, but to dietary intake as well. Like with many mineral supplements, be aware that some may still label their bottles with the total compound amount per serving, while others state the elemental amount. 
Minerals are always bound to something else. 325 milligrams of ferrous sulfate does not mean you're getting 325 milligrams of iron. That's an absurd amount of iron to be taking if it were the case. And you're likely getting about 65 milligrams of iron, which is still quite a bit. I wouldn't recommend that form anyway. It's just an example to read the doses carefully. Most of the dosing recommendations you'll see for iron deficiency are based off of the poorly absorbed ferrous sulfate. So while they're telling you to take 100 to 200 milligrams of iron per day, you got to adjust this when using a better iron supplement. The best iron supplement in my book has to be the ferrokeel glycine bound chelated iron. This stuff has effectively twice the absorption ability than the ferrous sulfate I just mentioned. Numerous studies have confirmed it being safer and gentler than most others. And this form is also not affected by phytates, so that's one less thing you need to worry about in your diet. The body can also better regulate this form of iron, meaning that the more you need, the more you'll absorb. So this, along with a liposomal vitamin C and betaine HCL supplement, is going to be the ultimate stack for correcting an iron deficiency. I will leave the links to these products in the description box below. And just remember that after establishing an iron deficiency, not just anemia, to address the diet first, then take correct supplements at the correct times. Don't carelessly mess around with iron. Please like the video if it was beneficial to you and share it with people that you think it can help. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy, everyone.